Just so you know, Coach, that three straight overtime games has only happened. Uh, last time that happened was 1964. And that was all on the road, and K State also won all three of those games. Wow. So we have we we got some work to do. It was all in conference play too. Oh so man! They keep up to the end. Oh man! Hey, uh, first of all, I just want to thank our fans. Um, you know, people can be offended sometimes when you challenge them. You know, and I challenged our students and challenged our season ticket holders to make sure that they give their tickets away. And um, I, I love every one of them, but I mean, you know, part of loving is expecting, you know, some things. And, and our students responded like, man, I could not believe. And our fans were incredible. And so that atmosphere, that was a big time game in a big time atmosphere. And the all of the world got to, you know, got to see that on ESPN too. And, um, it's going to help us in recruiting. It's going to help us, you know, just with everything moving forward. And so, but now they've told on themselves, right? They can be at the games and they can be loud. And just like our guys have told on themselves that, uh, you know, they can get eight kills in a game and they can, uh, you know, guard and rebound a little bit. <laughs> so, you know, just everybody, I think there's a lot of telling on ourselves this, this game. And I'm just very thankful um, for the win. Um, and, uh, very proud of our guys. They're just really gritty and tough, and and then uh, they're very poised in in tough situations. And so um, that, that's a credit to them and their hard work. Who wants to go first? No questions. Let's go. All right. How <laughs> much better was your defense tonight than it has been? Oh, it was, it was a lot better. But, you know, it wasn't – it was – we were more focused tonight, uh, Tim. Like, we challenged the guys. I thought um, they were locked in on the game plan for the South Dakota State game, and uh, it showed, right, with how we played and how we defended. Um, and then we haven't been as locked in, and so we challenged them to, man, be locked in on the game. If they listened to the game plan – and they followed it and focused it that we we would uh, win this game, and and they did, and so um, for the most part, and so I was very 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 pleased. Can you walk me through that last play where Tyler hits the shot. He said it was actually supposed to go to Cam, but then he steps up and makes it. What? How well, did that the, just work? There was a couple options on that. You know, we'd gotten the lob to Cam off of the 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 up screen. Uh, in the first half, we got the lob in the first half, and then he should have completed the lob. The pass was a little off, you know, uh, and we knew that it set up a flare for Cam. And if the flare wasn't there, then it was going to turn into a ball screen for TP. And so T, the, the guy did a really good job. I think it was Longino that was guarding Cam, did a good job of fighting over the top of the flare. So then Dave set the screen and then flipped the screen, and there – their rule is on a flip ball screen, they automatically switch. So now they got TP on their five man, and then he was able to drive his feet inside the three point line. So then he was able to get the step back for the shot. And once he stepped back, I knew it was going in. And is, is that the version of uh, Arthur Coloma you've been waiting on? Yeah, in the first half. Yeah, and uh, I thought like he was he was super special in the first half, and and he was good in the second half. And they made an adjustment, right? They paid more attention to him, and then Cam stepped up in the second half. And that's when you have multiple weapons, you know. That's that's where like one guy gets going, and and I thought our guys kept getting uh, Arthur shots, right? And then they said, okay, let's take Art away. And well, if they take Art away, it's gonna leave somebody else open. And Cam got going. We got to get Cam going downhill, some, and then you know TP was TP and. So, um, you know, I, I, like, I felt like going into the year, um, we had more weapons um, that were ready to step up. And uh, I'm, we're starting to see some of that, and I think we can keep improving in that area. Love to know your thoughts just on Will McNair's game tonight. Oh, Will was good. Will was good. Um, Will is, uh, I think, uh, all right, let's, let's, I'm not going to go there with that. Let's, I was very pleased with Will. I thought he was focused. Uh, I mean, that's, 
the kind of thing. I think there's some shots he would dis he was disappointed that he missed. Um, but I was concerned. I wanted him to go to the next play, and that's the growth that Will's gonna make, where he can, you know, he can go six for ten instead of four for ten, and not not because his ability is gonna improve. Not that it's gonna be because he's not gonna worry about the missed shot, and he's gonna go make the next play, and that's that's gonna be an L L evolution for him that he doesn't worry about the things that don't go well and he just focuses on doing the next right thing. Tyler's struggled shooting early in games the last handful of times out really this entire game until the last shot. Is there something that it's just bad luck or does he need to be more aggressive or is there something that he could do better that he's doing late in games to set himself up to get started quicker? You know, if I if I knew that answer, then uh, we would make that adjustment and we'd do it. Um, this is what I think. I think people are game planning to stop him early. And I was I thought his first half was incredible, right? Three assists, one turnover. We have an eight point lead against the top twenty five team in the country, right? I mean, that's he was he was a floor general out there, and he was guarding on the defensive end, and. He looked like he was frustrated because the ball wasn't going in. And so the growth is going to be not to be frustrated. And then he's going to be able to relax and make some of those shots and not think about it early on. But the more the other guys step up and do that, the less they're going to be able to focus in on him. And then we're going to um, watch him do better or make some shots earlier. But I don't care if he waits till the last two seconds to make a shot all game long. As long as it goes in and we win, I'm good. But, it's, you know, we just trust our work, you know, like, and we don't trust the results. You know, results are going to change. But if we put in the work and him and Cam, they put in the work, Arthur puts in the work. So you trust him in those moments and, and the team trust him, right? Like, because they see the work he puts in, they see what he does every day at practice. And I'm just telling you, he's, he is, you know, we've been saying we've been taking ap applications are, uh, you know, all applications are being taken. And, and my man has submitted an application and now is putting in uh, the work to, to earn the right to, to lead the team and to coach the team and to, you know, talk in huddles and, you know, because he's, he's, doing, he's becoming an everyday guy. How much have you been able to learn about this team over these last three overtime wins? Um, you know, a lot. I'm, I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot. You know, um, we proved that we were gritty and tough, you know, as this thing has been going along, the, the, the Providence game, you know, proved that. Um, I know we can, you know, when we take the right shots, we can make shots. Um, what, I, what I'm learning is that they, they really, like, they, they, they probably love each other more than I give them credit for because of how they, they, they're covering up for each other now defensively, you know, and, uh, and our communication is growing. It's got, got, got a ways to go, but, but you see it out there that they're, they're talking and they're, they're talking early, loud, and often, and, and that's, that's helping our defense, and it's going to continue to help the rest of it. So I, I, I like where we're at. You know, I mean, everybody would like to be undefeated right now. And, and, you know, you'd say, well, coach, you know, man, do you really want to play all these overtime games? Well, maybe if we don't play those other two overtime games, we're not poised in this one, you know. And uh, so I, I don't know about y'all, but I had a smile on my face in overtime. And I looked in their eyes and I saw they were like, hey, we got this, you know. And even when we down four, we didn't get rattled. And so those are the things that come from being in those overtime games that everybody thought we sucked for having to go to overtime. You know, um, and so th that's the blessing of the, the this journey that we're going through. How nice was it? I, I know in the other two overtimes, you basically just kind of were able to blitz, blitz your way to to the overtime win, to kind of have to work for it a little bit in that overtime period. How nice was that to see? Now I kind of like the blitz thing better. Yeah, but no, you know, um, watching them uh, not get frustrated, you know, the foul the the bucket that was made you know I think they hit one three-pointer um, but then they were one for four from the field in the the, the overtime so that's 25 percent I think from two uh, I'm let me make sure I'm, I say that right 
Yeah, and overtime, they were one for four. That's 25%. The one that they made, I think, was a three, and then they got to the free throw line, and the guys didn't get frustrated because of the fouls or them getting to the free throw line. We came down, and we took care of business on the other end, you know, by going, you know, 60% from two and one for two from three, and, you know, and then we made our two free throws. So it was just a big-time game, and they're a good team, uh, well-coached. You know, they, they got great – we, we – uh, we did what we were supposed to do at home and for the Big 12. And, you know, if the Baylor Bears can pull this thing off here, you know, take care of business, then I think we win the Big East Challenge, Big 12 Big East Challenge. And um, so and that's a great day for the Big 12. And then obviously I know you, you want to celebrate this one and worry about the next one tomorrow. But No, I ain't going to worry about tomorrow. We're not thinking about it till Thursday. Thursday. Staff, everybody, we're taking a Sabbath tomorrow. Wednesday, No, nobody's coming to the office. We're going to stay home, be with our families. We're going to rest. You know, if somebody chooses to watch some film or, or make some phone calls, that's on them. But um, we're, we're, we're going to enjoy this. We're going to rest. We're going to recover it. And we're going to come back Thursday, and we're going to be ready to get after it. What is the level of frustration, the way that second half went? You held a lead for most of it, and then the game did have to go to overtime. No, no, no. I mean, you know, well, I'm going to go and look at the last five minutes of regulation and say, what are the things that we could have done better, right? And uh, I'm sure there are going to be some things we could have done better. Um, but while it's going on, I'm, I'm, I'm not as – I'm not frustrated. I'm just thinking, like, oh, it's just thinking, what's, what's the next play? And I think our guys are there. Too. like they're thinking what's the next play they did a really good job of helping off of the guys they need to help off of and making it hard for everybody else I thought we did a really good job of trying to sub offense for defense so that they couldn't do that and uh, so it was a, a chess match going on out there going back to your team being focused tonight you think this was maybe the most perfect minutes your team had in a game all season uh, most consistent yes yeah most consistent I'm, I'm I think when Coach Marco does the breakdown, he'll probably, you know, have five or six, maybe more than that, uh, perfect defensive possessions um, that we chart, and uh, that's one of the things he does. And so, you know, I, yeah, I, I mean, this was a good win, you know. This was a good win, and uh, our guys deserve to enjoy it. But like I tell them all the time, you know, for every thousand men who can handle adversity, there's only one who can handle success, and so we've got to – when it's time, move on to the next thing. But right now, we're going to enjoy this. How much tutelage is there for that mindset of making stops comes before runouts and getting fast break points? Um, well, we do this thing all in practice, uh, stop, stop, score, stop. You know, if you want to be, I always tell them, if you want to win a championship, you got to get a stop, a score, and a stop. And, uh, you know, that's what we did. We got a stop, came down, made a shot, and then went back down with four seconds and 3.9 and got to stop. And so we do it in practice. It's, it's a practice drill for us. Your rotation seems a little bit smaller in this game. Is that, are you kind of starting to hone in now on, I guess, on the guys you trust in big moments? Or was that just more dictated by the specific? Yeah, I think it was just, more dictated by specific things and what like what we thought were good matchups you know um probably uh high side could have got rj in in the first half um you know he's a guy that has to be guarded out there rj's doing a great job man he is his defense has improved so much we um He's fighting through screens he's he's getting deflections um i mean last game he had a big time deflection, recovery, kick ahead for a bucket this game. I think he did the same thing, got caught on Dixon in the post. And, and so the young guys are coming along, right? And, uh, you know, just you, you, we got to figure out how to find some minutes for him. But, you know, this game we didn't think, like, there was a time we need to have three freshmen on the floor at one, one time. You brought in TP and Art and before the season, obviously. We're in Kansas City. We're talking about potential of these guys. Coach, I'm just curious how close are TP and Art to playing to their potential and maybe what you envisioned for them when they came to K-State? Uh, that's a good question. You know, um, 
man, I'm one of them dudes that, like, if you, like, you know, you give me 10, then I'm like, bro, we could have got 12, you know? And so there's always a little bit more I think guys can give. Um, they, their winning DNA is what I thought it would be, right? And um, so I, their buy-in is, is coming around, you know, and, and how we want to do it. Like, there's a lot of ways to win, but um, this is how we choose to do it. And, and they're, they're buying into that more. And um, now we got to see, can we put, you know, three, four, five, six games together of consistency? And, uh, you know, I don't know that I can make that statement just right now, but I, I, I wouldn't trade it for anybody. After the game, we're walking toward the tunnel while Marley's playing. What's the significance of that? Uh, don't worry about a thing. Every little thing's gonna be all right. I mean, you know, we just, we, man, what I love about my staff, and our team and this program is that uh, we know how to celebrate. And uh, we, we celebrate differently than other people. Um, you know, for some people, you know, so, some people, uh, you know, I like the joy that we live our life with. And that comes from our relationship with Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, and, and we, we, can, we can enjoy life together. And um, man, it's, this thing is hard, right? It's hard. And so uh, there wasn't, a, I don't know that there was a significance to the song, because we play a bunch of different um, Calypso type songs in the, in the tunnel when the guys are coming up after games and so uh but you know we uh we, I, these dudes are fun to be around man and i'm, I'm blessed else hey thank you guys go cats